I am so glad that you are here. We are going to have so much fun today here under the sea. You can see I'm breaking through the wall of bubbles to come in under the sea. And there was so many fish here a few minutes ago. I wonder if you will be able to see maybe a stingray today or maybe one of those huge big sunfish. I don't know. Keep looking because you never know what you're going to see under the sea. But the first thing we're going to do before we start Sunday school today is pray. And when we pray, that is asking Jesus to come into Sunday school today to help our hearts to focus on him, remove all the distractions so we can learn what he wants us to learn today, all about him and his wonderful word. All right, let's bow our heads, close our eyes, okay? Jesus, we love you today, and we're so excited about coming to Sunday School. I ask that you touch everyone that is here today and that you would touch their hearts. And Lord, let it be that something today in Sunday School just speaks directly to them where they can draw closer to you and know more about you when they leave Sunday School than when they came. And we ask it today in Jesus' name, amen. Now, under the sea today, I have a clue for you of what we're going to learn. We're going to learn about clinging to something. Have you ever clung to something? You don't know what clinging means? Oh, let me tell you. It means holding on tight to something. But before we get into that, did you just see that? I think merciful Monica just walked by. She has something in her hand. Let's go see. I'm going to see if Joyous Julie is able to take part in this experiment with me. It's going to be so cool. I thought I saw her when I was coming this way. Have you guys seen her? Oh, oh Monica. Hi. Hey, I was just over there in the bubble. I swam under the sea and I saw you walking over here. What have you got in those bags? Did you bring a treat? Wow. Uh, no, I just have some stuff here. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is it? Well, I can't stuff. tell you. Just stuff in a bag? Why do you have stuff in a bag? I can't tell you. You have to guess what it is. It looks white. It looks like kind of like mints. I don't know. Well, can I, can I eat them? I can't tell you. But you can't eat it, but you can smell it. Smell it and what? see if you can guess what it is. Why would I want to smell it if I couldn't eat it? Why do I have to smell it? That's a strong nose you have. You can guess it. Oh, you ready? I guess, but I sure hope it isn't like gross or something. <sighs> you what, ready? Yeah. <laughs> what flavor do you think these mints might be? I think they're mints. Here you go. Oh, that's disgusting. What do you think it is? I don't. They look like mints, but that, oh, that is disgusting. <laughs> what is that? I'm not going to tell you. You'll just have to wait and see. Oh. But I have one more. I don't know that I want to smell on. one more. It's okay. You'll like this one. I thought the first one was mints and it's disgusting. Hmm. You'll like it. Trust me. Okay. okay. Ready Should your I nose. Do it? I don't know if I can get that stinky smell out of my nose. Should there you I, go. All gone. Should I do it? Should I do it? Okay. You ready? Only because it's an experiment for you. It's important for the kids. Do it for the kids. Okay, for the kids. Okay. Mmm. <laughs> that's 
smells like like flowers or something sweet. That smells wonderful. Ooh. What is that? You know I can't tell you. You'll have to wait and see. I guess we're gonna have to wait to see why I had to smell stinky stuff and why I got to smell pretty stuff. So, all right, we'll wait for our experiment. Guys, as I was down here experimenting and exploring all this beautiful stuff that the Lord created, I found a really cool fish. And his name is Angler. Can you say that? Of course you can. Angler fish. He's one of those sneaky kind of fish where he just camouflages in with his atmosphere and he gets really down low. He looks like a rock, like a big stone. And he lays there, eyes closed, just still. And he's got this little thing that goes on top of his head and it just shoots back and forth. And other fish, littler fish, they think it's some kind of worm. They think it's some food for them to eat. But as they get closer and closer to it, they don't know that the anglerfish is preparing them to be food for himself. They get close and his mouth comes up and snaps down on them and they become angler food. It's kind of like he tempts them, draws them in, and then when they think that they're about to have a really cool snack, it's not a snack at all. It's the opposite of a snack. Oh, that's like that perfume, that really sweet smell and that really stinky smell that I gave to Joyce Julie. She thought these were mints. They do kind of look like mints. They're small, they're round, they're white. But they are not mints. They're stinky mothballs. And they are horrible. If you guys were here right now, you'd just be like, Merciful Monica, throw it away! I can't throw it away yet. And this, it just is so small and flat, not exciting to look at at all. But it's actually a really sweet, beautiful smelling perfume. And she liked that one. So she thought she was getting one thing, she got something else. The little fish thought that they were getting a snack and they really became angler bait. That's how the devil does us. We think we're going to have something really wonderful when we're tempted and we go toward it further and further and further and we have no idea that the end result is destruction. But God does and he tries to protect us and warn us ahead of time, don't go that way, destruction ahead. Are we gonna listen? I think I'm gonna be listening a little bit more. Guys, I am here in the cave and this reminds me so much of the apostle john when he penned this verse our memory verse revelation 1 10 and 11 do you remember it he was all alone but he made sure to worship god and be in his presence even on the lord's day when he could have been doing anything else he was all alone no one was watching him but he remembered it so let's sing this song to the memory verse so it'll help you guys remember it when you're all alone or in a crowd of people and you need to have that verse come to your mind. So here it goes, okay? Revelation 1, 10. Revelation 1, 11. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a great voice like a trumpet say, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. And send it to the seven churches. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. And send it to the seven churches. You guys can remember that. Well, practice it. Rewind and practice it. And never forget it because it's important. Let's dive deep and worship God right now. Run dry. 
today here under the sea and I am so excited to tell you about the Word of God today one thing you need to always remember is that when we have our Bible lesson that it is the absolute Word of God and that's what we get excited about is putting that Word of God deep in our heart because the Lord gave us these lessons for a purpose and we're gonna find out what that purpose is today but before we start the Bible lesson. I have something for you. And it is not stinky mothballs. It is this. Are you ready? Look. I brought a snack today. Which one would you like a bite of? This banana or this one? Yeah, I agree. This one, right? You may say, Joyce, Julie, why did you bring a rotten banana and a good banana to Sunday school today under the sea. I am so glad you asked. It is because this is a perfect example of what has happened. Something absolutely good has gone absolutely bad to where that it is rotten. What would happen if you ate rotten food? How would your stomach feel? Would you get sick? Probably. But if you ate this banana, you would get all the nourishment, the potassium, plus it is absolutely delicious. Well, this reminds us of how the world is today. There are some things that are absolutely rotten that people tell you, oh, it's okay, go ahead and eat of it. Whenever you know by looking at it, hmm, it looks bad. They're telling me this is good and something that's good for me, but it doesn't look so good. This banana, I could tell you to eat it and it would be absolutely delicious. Well, this is how that our story starts today with something that was absolutely good that went rotten. Now watch this. Today, we're gonna learn about a story of a city in the Bible called Pergamos. We've been learning all about the letters of John and how John was on the island and how that the Lord spoke to him when he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And when he was on that island, the Lord said, just like Merciful Monica reminded us in our Bible verse today, that he said that he was to write the letters. And that was a warning to those people. And we studied about two of the letters that John wrote, and today we're going to learn about the third one to the town of Pergamos. Have you ever had somebody warn you about something? If I told you, beware of the rotten banana, don't eat it, you'll get sick, that would be a warning to you, and I would tell you that because I cared about you and I didn't want you to get sick. Well, that's what the Lord did. The Lord talked to these people through John's letter and said, there's a warning, beware. 
and the people had a choice of whether they need to listen or not listen. Now, the story today in Pergamos, you can find in the book of Revelation chapter 2. And in this letter that John wrote, he told us a little bit about this city and some of the things that they were facing, some temptation, kind of like that anglerfish. You remember that Merciful Monica talked to us about how his antenna went out and he was dangling something in front of him that looked really good, but it was danger lurking. Well, this city in Pergamos, they had a lot of good things going for them, but they had some rotten things too. But let's talk first about the good, okay? We'll talk about the good things. This city of Pergamos, look right here at this picture. And it says in Revelation 2 and verse 12 through 17, it tells us that Pergamos is located in what you would know today is the modern day Turkey. And it is surrounded. See all those hills all around it and see the water? That city is totally surrounded by all of that beauty. Archaeologists have went and looked in that city and dug in the ruins. And they have found that that city existed all the way back to 800 BC. And look at this picture. In this picture, you can see that the people of Pergamos, they were inventors and they created parchment with calf skins. And this picture, these walls could have been a hospital. They built hospitals way back then. Look at this picture. This is a large theater. Do you see the seats that are there? It was an amphitheater and they made it in the side of that hill to the point where that someone on stage could whisper and their voice would be heard all the way in the back. And this last picture, look at this. Look at all those pillars and the foundation. That could have been the library that was in the city of Pergamos because the library, they said, was one of the largest libraries of its time that was there in that city. Isn't that amazing? Now, this was the good things that the city of Pergamos had going for them. But there were some rotten things that were in the city. Now, the rotten things that were in the city were that the people, they had clung. Remember the clue I gave you earlier? They had clung to some things that were rotten. The people in Pergamos, do you see my cling wrap? If I put this cling wrap around this rotten banana, look at this. It clings so tightly to it that it just encases it. Now you can't get any closer than that, than this cling wrap around this rotten banana. And those people in Pergamos, they clung to some pretty rotten things. They were worshiping things that they shouldn't worship. They were clinging to some bad decisions that they made. They were clinging to some things like we talked about last week in Smyrna, how that they worshiped their emperor. That was like their president bowing down to them. We know we don't do that because the word of God teaches against it. We're only to bow down and worship the Lord. And there's other things that the people in Pergamos did that were bad decisions that they clung to. And they weren't making very good choices. So what happened was, is there were some Christians in Pergamos. And those Christians in Pergamos, they were making some pretty good decisions. They were loving the Lord. They had repented of their sins. They had been baptized in Jesus' name. And they even had the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus living inside of you. And they were living life right there next to the rotten. But just like that anglerfish, there were some people who were clinging to the bad things that started putting out that temptation and telling the Christians in Pergamos that if they just did these few bad things, well, it would be okay. That would be like saying, um, eat this rotten banana. It's all right. You won't get sick. But just because I'm saying it doesn't make it true, does it? Just like the people of Pergamos that were persecuting the Christians and saying, if you don't do these bad things that we're telling you to do, then um, the penalty is death. 
That was the kind of persecution that the Christians in Pergamos were going through. And the Lord looked down and he saw the temptation that was out there. He heard the lies that they were being told. And he loved the Christians of Pergamos just like he loves us so much. So much that he spoke to John on that island and said, John, write those Christians a letter and let them know. I am so pleased with them that they are clinging to the right choices, even though there's temptation and even though there's things out there that are pretty rotten that they're being told is good. And the Christians in Pergamos clung to the right things of God. But the Lord told them, be careful of temptation. And if you are tempted, know that I'm there to strengthen you and I'll be with you. There were even some of the Christians in Pergamos, and one is mentioned there if you read that scripture passage, that he was martyred. That means that he was killed. But the Lord said, if you continue clinging to the right thing, here's what you're going to get. You're going to get a reward. And that reward is going to be life with me forever in heaven. And he talks about a white stone. Back in these times, if you were brought up in front of a judge and whatever they accused you of, if you were found to be innocent, they gave you a white stone, which meant you were cleared of the charges. And so the Lord was speaking to them about something that they were very familiar with. And he said, you're not only going to get eternal life in heaven and a reward that the Lord is going to give us, but you're also going to get this white stone and it's a name that I know. A special name the Lord gave them. That's pretty exciting. And what can we learn from this? We've learned about these letters that the Lord had John write. And I know that we live here in this time of 2021. And you may think, Joyce, Julie, what does that have to do with me? Let me tell you, if you look around your world, there are some pretty good things, right? But there's also some pretty rotten things. And there may be some people that are out there talking to you and saying, it's okay, take of this, it'll be okay, it won't hurt you. When you know that what they're tempting you to do, like that angler fish, how he's tempting those little fish, and they have no idea that he's there in the sand, and if they get closer to that danger, closer and closer, then they're gonna be a hot lunch. And we need to be careful that when we're tempted, that we don't cling to bad things. But when we're tempted, we just say, Lord, would you help me? This is like a really hard time right now. There's some people who are trying to get me to make some wrong choices, and I know they're wrong. Will you help me and strengthen me and help me make the right choice? And do you know that the Lord will? That's how much he loves us. If he would have John write the people of Pergamos a letter, then he has you where you can come to Sunday school and learn, what do I do when I'm tempted? You pray. You ask the Lord to help you. You ask those people in your life that are those positive, great influences. I'm having a little bit of trouble here. Can you help me? And they'll be right there to help you. The Lord is on your side. So if you're tempted to do the wrong thing, remember, Make right choices and talk to the Lord and he'll be there to strengthen you. All right, right before we go today, I have got an assignment for you. In our lesson today, we learned about clinging to the right thing. So this week when you're tempted, and when you have a bad choice or a good choice in front of you, remember, cling to righteousness. Cling to the right thing. Because that's what Jesus, he told the people in Pergamos. He said, cling to the right thing, make those right choices, and that is rewarding. And that's what we need to do too, okay? So, I want you to... Um, <laughs> Oliver? Uh... What are you doing here today? I, I didn't know that you were coming to visit today. I couldn't stay away. You were talking about clinging to the things of God and uh -huh. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm doing just that. I'm so excited. Um, You sure do have some 
things clinging to you there, Oliver. Yep. Uh, but mm -hmm. I don't think that's quite what we were talking about. Why did you put all this stuff on you? Oh, I have to. That's how you clean. It's getting close and gets tight. Yes, I have to cling to it. I'm clinging to all the things of the Lord. I'm clinging to Jesus. I'm clinging to reading my Bible. I'm clinging to making right choices. Yes. Yeah, I see that in truth and singing yep. and worshiping and what's yep. the song? Oh, Jesus on your tie. That's that's really good, well, Oliver. Yeah. Can I have your right hand in front. over here? I want to see and uh, oh, Sunday school. Yes. Yes, you're clinging to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Oliver, um, I hate to tell you this, but when you cling to right choices, it doesn't mean that we like tape stuff all over us. It just means that we make those right choices and we hold tight to the good choices and we, we just make the right choices. Like if you were thinking of staying home from Sunday school or going to Sunday school, you cling to the right choice by going to Sunday school or like truth. You cling to truth by saying, I'm going to believe the truth, not a lie. And you read the word of God and that's how you find out what truth is. And so you cling to the right decision, not put a bunch of stickers on your body and your, your head there. Are you serious? Are we serious? Really? Yeah, we're, we're really serious, Oliver. Well, yeah. So I didn't have to tape all this stuff to me? No, no. No, you didn't have to tape everything to you. I was I just... I didn't have to put tape in my hair? No, you didn't have to put tape in your hair. I was just telling the kids to go make right choices this week and not tape them to their body. Well, they should make right choices. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I should go get these things off me. Sure. Would you like me to help you, Oliver? That would be wonderful. Okay. Thank you. So while I help Oliver take all these things off of him, um, you make sure you cling to right choices today because you will get a reward from the Lord. Okay, Oliver, here. Can I help you? Be careful. I, 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 be careful. Okay, I don't want to ah, hurt your hair. Oh, wait. Maybe we should take this one off first, yeah. off your tie. That, yeah. that won't be so bad. And then what about this one? That's not bad, is it, Oliver? Let's and the, the arm. Okay, ready? Ah! <laughs> okay, Oliver, ready? Hey! <gasps> Oliver, it's wait. really stuck. Hey, wait, 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 What? Go slow. Okay, I'll go slow. Hold still. You keep jerking. Ah! There. Was that so bad? Yes. Okay. Why don't Thank you just... You. Okay, I don't... Why don't you just you. tell the kids, see you next week while we finish. Bye, guys. Yeah. Pray for me. <laughs> see you next week, okay? See you next Make week. Make the choices. Don't put tape on you. Because you're showing up deep, deep away.